Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the late one with your truly silver and sidial. Welcome, Stephen. Welcome, Uncle Joe. Welcome, everyone. And um, Instagram land. I want to thank you so much for the 25th of June 2019. 2019. Wonderful day. Very hot day. But guess what? It is not as hot as in Jamaica. Why do I always speak of Jamaica? Because I come from Jamaica. But anyway, it's not as hot as it is in Jamaica. I understand that in Jamaica right now, I, I, I believe they say it is near to, they say 100, near to 100 degrees. Can you imagine that? Very hot, hot, hot. And you know what that weather is like? So because of it's so hot in Jamaica, normally when you're in Jamaica, you walk around with your towel. Some always feel a bit hot as well, right here in the UK, you know? Maybe it's heating up because of the the upcoming elections for the new prime ministership of the UK. Uh, but we're on for uh, a long and uh, what should I say, a hot ride. It is indeed going to be a long and a hot ride in the UK leading up to Brexit. And uh, two days ago, the 23rd of June, um 2019 was three years i believe it's three years 2016 to 2019 three years i say i kid you not three years since the uk voted to leave the european union and guess what we're still in the european union okay three years since that's a fact kdn how are you doing and uh and so tonight i said what i wanted to talk about is simply about the the whole issue regarding um brexit but not just brexit and i said brexit it sounds a bit why i mentioned brexit but everything points towards brexit now the two leaders con contesting for the leadership of the conservative party eventually to be the prime minister based on how the system is as a result of that it leads towards brexit yep who can deliver Brexit? That's a key word. Who can deliver Brexit? Who get the keys to number 10? Now, at the same time, there's a song in Jamaica by Be The Man. Who get the cars? Who get my keys to my Be Ma? Oh, man. You know what I mean? I was going to try to find that song actually to play, but I, I'm not in a position to tolerate any issues with Facebook. You know, because Facebook is very funny when it comes on to copyright and all those sort of things. So, yeah, I won't go there as much as possible that, you know, neither of them. <laughs> well, I mean, we can start right away by saying um, it, it's unfortunate that many people say neither of them, Jeremy Hunt or Boris Johnson, are to get the keys to number 10 in a few weeks. Neither of them, as Stephen pointed out. Now the question is, if neither of them, then who? And based on how the system is, it is only two of them now. Now what we're having is a war of the words at the same time, you know? But what I want to do today, I want to sort of pull back a bit and sort of look at some of the, 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 the key facts about these gentlemen, and who they are, the ministries they have served, and what they are bringing to the table, if they can bring to the table, you know? 31st will come and go yeah elaborate on that Stephen. 31st will come and go i think every day will come and go what do you mean by that you can break it down as a matter of fact Stephen, we want to um thank you so much for that work which you did in delivering that uh, uh workshop um recently on knife crime and the work that you're doing in um with knife crime as, as a as a barrister and ladies and gentlemen you need to watch a show with Stephen akinsania um on my show it has it has wrapped up it, it has ramped up a lot of views at present on the facebook version of the show it's also on youtube as well do check it out you know um because at the same time i must point out that at the same time while there is let me let me turn this down i think i can turn this down now now we have started up and everybody has enjoyed the music let me know if you enjoy that music while the whole thing with Brexit is going on, while the whole thing with the leadership is happening, there are a couple of things also which has took place over the few days. Uh, one which was the 22nd of June, which was the Windrush Day, and uh, you know people celebrating um, the Windrush era, the persons who came um, to the UK on, on the Windrush Empire. And also I pointed out as well that there are also people who came 
on other boats as well after you know to the UK um, and you know and last night uh, it was it last night it was last night last night I watched a show recently as well whereby they talk about some of the injustices uh, I forget the, the gentleman who did that program but I watched it last night and I, I think I'll have to try to get him to come on my show as a, on a one-to-one -one, um, about the work that he's doing and that was really that was really really powerful it talks about I call it the hidden truth or what they say the hidden truth the, the conspiracy um, things which happen which the, 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 they try to hide I never forget the late Martin um, what's his name mr. Martin you know who was um, a, a teacher of mine um, Dean Martin who passed away recently in Jamaica and um, you always say about media frames what if what the media want us to see you know recently someone said to me about a particular person and they said something and I said do you know have you got facts and person said, yeah I saw it where did you see it from I saw it from the news ah, I saw it from the news through someone's eyes where do you saw it from the media through social media it seemed like in social media teams deemed to be a bit more authentic these days than um, the mainstream media because the mainstream media and even me even though what I'm here may be trying to twist certain things in order to give a particular light so so yes so there are injustices regarding the wind rush um, terrible injustices which you know um, there's still recent five um, young five persons got killed recently with knife crime as well that was something which is still happening even though we're not hearing anymore Cressida Dick was on LBC this morning and L Cressida Dick who is the Commission of Police Scotland Yard she said that really the figures are going positive going positive means to say they're going down the crime is going down but at the same time while she said the crime is going down you have other persons who lose someone will say well based on my situation based on my circumstance it is not going down and of course one has got to look at it from the bigger picture so the so Chrissy the dick and um, the government as we are looking at the bigger picture uh, there was a hundred last year and there's 50 this year just using that for example it has gone down by 50 but the 50 persons who lost um, those people um, family friend brothers sisters will not look at it that way because as far as I'm concerned they've lost a, a loved one they've lost a friend they lost a father they lost a mother and everything so the work that Stephen is doing and the work that many persons are doing in combating the whole issue of knife crime gun crime by education I use that word by education that is very crucial by education by by understanding some of the aspect by understanding what is happening in the home that is also crucial and likewise with the whole wind rush thing because with the wind rush thing there's a lot of the children of the persons who came over on the wind rush empire or within that era are still also going through some bit but I always seem to qualify it I always seem to qualify it by saying at the same time that even though um, there were people who suffered during that period of time the majority um, did not right the majority have gone through at the same time and majority are, are doing well yet at the same time yes they went through the period went through the racial period way to the, the attack period whereby they call it names no Irish no dogs no blacks and all those sort of things yes they went through that so it was a testing period and that is why it is also very concerning where you got young people not understanding their past not understanding what happened during the period of that time to be killing one another and yes let's say black and black for now okay it's, it's a wider uh, cross-section of that but let's say black and black to sort of break it down and to make it a bit more relevant to a certain way when I talk about the wind rush when I talk about black people coming over when I talk about um, the world immigration and, and the system um, conspiring against them we're talking about black people and we talk about racism and we talk about slavery we're talking about black people right and and even now when we're talking about even different things even brexit and new prime minister we say how do we fit into that scheme of things you know how do we fit into that scheme of things? how do we fit into that scheme of things when whereby we're we're seeing a, a, a government or we're seeing um, a country which somewhat deemed to conspire because based on what the program was last night one of the things that came out is the successive governments whether it was Labour Party whether it was Conservative Party then Labour Party Conservative Party they all seem to be um, conspiring or had an agenda towards um, 
getting the person's hair from the Caribbean, from the Commonwealth, and yet at the same time want to shut the door on them and want to make it a bit difficult. So it was a, a concerted effort, it may seem to be. Um, so so it, it, it is not um, relegated to just one one aspect and one side of the, the whole thing. Now, what's the story? Angela Black would say, what's the story? One of the things, Angela, what we tend to do when we when we come onto the Facebook Live, you'll see the topic at the top. <laughs> but I'll assist you anyhow. The topic is always at the top there. The topic is, who will get the keys to number 10 in a few weeks? That is number 10 down the street. Or who will get the keys to my bima? As a song by Beanie Man said, who will get the keys to my bima? You know? Who would, would you like to be the Prime Minister and why? Of course, we only got two persons at this moment. Um, so we're talking about, is their private life relevant? Is someone's private life relevant? Because what we're seeing as well is that the news, the news completely is um, a washed, a washed, what would I say? A, 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 a washed with the um, the private life of Boris you know? Um Key things that should be talked about. It, it is not just Brexit. Talk about NHS. Talk about crime. There's no grilling as to what is what what they're going to do about crime. It's talk about what happened in your house that night. Why was that noise? What happened? Who who took that picture? That picture there. Who is in that picture? Why is that picture there? You know who t was that picture before or after? hours, minutes, the media on hype. Do you know that none of the mainstream newspapers on June the 22nd had on the front page anything about Windrush Day? There may be somewhere in the back side of the paper or within the paper or maybe somewhere on the small side of the paper, if any, maybe on the front page, but none of the main page, none of the mainstream media had anything about the Windrush Day. However, when the whole thing was going on because it, it was the the hype at the time, it was the, the main issue at the time, the key thing at the time, they all had it up there because what it did, it brought viewership, it brought readership, and by virtue of that, it went viral likes. But now it's not a big thing. It's not a big thing now. So none of them actually had it. What was big was about a potential prime minister having a squabble, it is deemed, with his girlfriend. And somebody reporting it because of their concerns and they took a, vi a, 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 a recording of it because they were also concerned right don't know the full background to it don't know what what made them give it to the papers the Guardian but Chrissy the Dick Chrissy the Dick who is the Commissioner of Police today said it is good when somebody do that and report it because guess what it could save a life but anyway, it had said that it wasn't an issue and it did not save a life because they were okay. All right. So what we're having now, July the 23rd, ladies and gentlemen, the UK will have a new prime minister. Okay. The U UK will have a new prime minister and that prime minister will either be Jeremy Hunt or that prime minister is going to be Boris Johnson. Before I go any further, I'm going to ask this question. And you can put your answer down below. First question is, who would you like to be the Prime Minister? It's a tricky one when I say like, you know. But I, I put it, who would you like to be the Prime Minister? Or, who would you prefer to be the Prime Minister? Now, I'm not talking beyond Labour and conservative at this moment now we're talking about within the conservative party within the two contenders that is jeremy hunt and boris johnson who would you like and why okay but let's look first uh, I, I sort of look first at um uh, jeremy hunt and the track record right jeremy hunt and the track record jeremy hunt um is one if you can recall um oversaw the london olympics as culture secretary and was the UK's longest serving health secretary. Now, if you recall, a lot of the strikes which were happening with the, the nurses and the doctors and the NHS, they were saying, where's Jeremy Hunt? I'm sorry, I mean Hunt. <laughs> you know, that was deliberate. You know, um, where's Jeremy Hunt? You know, he's hiding. Where's Hunt? He's hiding. And, um, and as, as a result of that, uh, I think they just hate him. They hate him with a passion. That is the nurses, the doctors, anything from the NHS. And the NHS is the largest 
public service employer. If I yeah, and and Tony Kelly or someone can actually correct me there or amend it there, they are the the longest. Yeah. Now, before entering Parliament, Jeremy Hunt had a career as an English teacher in Japan and as an entrepreneur. He became the MP for Southwest Surrey at the 2005 general election, taking over from Virginia Bottomley. Now, I know Virginia Bottomley by virtue of shadowing her husband um, in my shadow scheme, which is Peter Bottomley. Yeah. Um, from 2005 to 2007, Mr. Hunt was shadow minister for disabled people. He was rewarded for supporting David Cameron, who attended Oxford University at the same time as him, in the conservative leadership election right um, so therefore he was he was uh, minister for disabled people from 2005 to 2007 that was shadow culture secretary um, shadow 2007 2010 um, secretary or culture secretary 2010 2012 and foreign secretary from 2012 to 2018 that doesn't sound right there I don't think that that what I'm looking at does make sense something Something is wrong there, some of the figures that I'm looking at there, but let me just break it down. In 2009, he was found to have breached expenses rules and ordered to pay more than 9500 He had allowed his agent to stay rent-free in his constituency property, which was designated as a second home. You know about the expense scandal which took place some time ago. Mr. Hunter claimed 19117 in public money towards the property, but it was decided that he hadn't benefited financially from the situation, right? Yes. So, when when the local when the conservative uh, government joined forces with the Lib Dem coalition government, which was formed in 2010, Jeremy Hunt, he joined the cabinet as Secretary of State for Culture, Olympics, Media, and Sport, right? The, the whole thing regarding the 2012 Olympics, it is deemed that it was a, co a collaborative effort. Boris Johnson was the, um, the, the mayor of London. Tessa Joel played a fantastic part with that. And the culture secretary. There are many persons who had their hand in that. It was a key role in the run-up to London 2012 Olympics. And he worked closely with the London mayor, which is Boris Johnson. Mr. Hunt campaigned on the importance of tourism during the Olympics. And he took the decision as well to double the budget from the Olympic and Paralympic ceremonies from 40 million to 81 million. Olympic opening ceremony widely seen as a big su success. Right? One reason why I'm bringing this up and I'm talking about this is because I believe sometimes it is very important that sometimes we, we, we um, understand um, the background of, of some of these persons. I believe most times people will, will shut down we shut down these persons, not interested, not wanting to know. And I always say it's always very key to keep a close eye on politics. Keep a close eye on those persons who are deemed to be the one, yeah, deemed to be the one who prepared to want to serve you. People will, will yeah? shut down? Yeah, sorry. Will shut down these persons? Yeah, yep. yep. Sometimes It's good when you can hear your voice, you know, because guess what? Some people can't hear. So therefore, we've got to give God, God thanks for, for that, that one can hear, right? So, so Jeremy Hunt um, played that particular part there for, for that time. And um, he has been what you'd say a, a loyal, a, a loyal um, follower, a loyal um, government minister. Um, one doesn't hear of any major scandal with him and, and, and stuff like that. Mark Renaissance Cameron, hey boss, how is, how is this? How is things? Well, well, today, Mark, we are we are on the wall leadership of the UK right now. I know in Jamaica, there's some leadership issue regarding the People's National Party. The leadership going on all over the place, but I'm sort of zeroing on the the UK now between the the two persons, which is Boris Johnson and um, Jeremy Hunt, and and some of the development which is happening. So what I'm doing now, I'm just setting out a little background of these persons. Early in 2012, in his career, was hanging in the balance, that is Jeremy Hunt, during the Livingston Inquiry into the culture and practices of the press, his contact with the Murdoch family came under scrutiny. Right? Hunt was, Murdoch family, you know, old Mock Fox and all those key um, major newspapers, Sky B. Hunt was responsible for overseeing the proposed takeover 
of B Sky B by Rupert Murdoch News Corp. He was criticized for failing to supervise his advisor's content with News Corp and for messages he exchanged with James Murdoch on the bid. His special advisor, Adam Smith, was forced to quit. The inquiry released text sent from Hunt to News Corp lobbies. Fred Michael went to bidding for B Sky B. The culture secretary addressed him as Daddy and Monamin. Don't know what that means. Their wives had given birth in the same hospital separately in December 2010. Mr. Hunt insisted he acted with total integrity during the bid process. As culture secretary, Mr. Hunt also led a government to plan to launch local television stations across the UK. More than 30 had been set up before Ofcom. Later, Ofcom is the regulator for the media um, as well. Rollout of any further channels because of limited interest from viewers and financial difficulties. City TV holder, the holder of the local TV license of Birmingham, was forced to appoint administrators to find a buyer before it was even launched. Right? right? And now let's move on to when he was health secretary now. Jeremy Hunt was appointed health secretary in 2012 with Mario Miller taking on his previous role. He became the longest serving health secretary in NHS history, surpassing its founder. Labour's Anirim Bevan, right? Hunt held office during the slowest period of investment in the NHS since its foundation, which created big problems. NHS was established, health spending was risen above 4% above inflation, which on an average post-2010 as a coalition budget tried to reduce the deficit. Between 2005 and 2015, A&E visit went up by almost 30%. Now, one cannot blame the health secretary for every single thing which is happening because the health the health the the nhs is what you say is a very powerful area they say it is it is somewhat they say top heavy you know it, it whereby a lot of persons um at the top they make a lot of money and all those sort of things and um the monies are deemed to be not spread across properly along the line but there are many persons have their different perspective as it but jeremy hunt took a lot of the blow right but he was steadfast very obstinate stubborn very resolved and it seems like he wouldn't move he wouldn't budge as well as a series of austerity measures which included extending a cap on pay increases for nhs staff he was also criticized for his handling of the junior doctor contract role hunt said that changes to contract were essential to deliver a seven-day NHS in England by 2020, a pledge in the Conservatives' 2010 election manifesto, right? right. So, junior doctors responded by tweeting pictures of themselves working weekends and late shift with the hashtag MLN Work Germany, right? Junior doctors took part in series of walkout 2016 strike days between eight o'clock i mean it was just chaos i mean i've been there it just been chaos new contract for junior doctor were later imposed or after bma members rejected a deal agreed by the government right and there were issues about patient safety so it, it was a hard ride there for jeremy hunt right the foreign secretary now he became the foreign secretary now which is the latest role in 2018 after his predecessor and now leadership revival rival boris johnson quit over Theresa May's Brexit strategy. In March, he became the first Western foreign minister to visit Yemen since conflict there began. He was faced criticism for allowing the UK to sell arms to the Saudi regime. But you know what? In politics, anything happens. People tend to be, um, uh, what should I say, get into different scandals or get into different things because guess what? It is the whole, the whole process of politics. You know, Somebody has a particular brief, they sometimes have to suffer the consequence of, of such brief. But one of the, the positives which has been coming through of Jeremy Hunt is that he's focused, he's resolved, and he's determined. Determined to do what? One don't know. Because based on his position on Brexit, he was a Remainer. Think about that. A Remainer in the 2016 EU referendum. Mr. Hunt has since said he would vote leave in a second vote. He said this was because of the arrogance of the EU in Brexit negotiations. Now, if you recall, Theresa May is a, 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 a Remainer, right? And by her being a Remainer, many people blame 
the, the resolve and the tenacity and the style of um, negotiations emanate from someone who somewhat it is not within their heart to leave. That is somewhat be deemed as a view in regards to Jeremy Hunt that maybe he is not really keen on leaving as well. Right? And that's why Boris Johnson recently said, are you committed to leave on October the 31st? Do or die? You know, deal or no deal? That is something which is not coming true. And by virtue of that, and most of the conservative members, they are looking at to say, we need someone. We need someone who will leave. They need a Brexiter, a lever. And that is why, why they didn't want, in a way, for Michael Gove and Boris Johnson to have the, 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 the last um, battle, battle for number 10, it would become a bit very bloody. Because in a sense, both persons is one which the, the, the 160,000 is looking at and looking at one. Because what, what is deemed seen and what is looked at as a poll is that the majority of conservative members want to leave. And therefore, that completely nullifies or is not positive for Jeremy Hunt because guess what? He is a Remainer. He voted to remain. No matter what he said, he voted to remain. Okay? That doesn't mean to say that being a Remainer, one cannot actually respect the results of the referendum. Theresa May did that. As far as I'm concerned, Theresa May respected it. Um, she tried her best. She got a deal, but nobody likes a deal. Not even those who are part of the deal likes a deal as well so therefore as a result of that they are saying now deep in her heart she is a remainer so therefore she hasn't got that gravitas so what we're seeing with Jeremy Hunt could be seen could be deemed as a replica a clone factor of Theresa May because guess what he is a remainer right so therefore he's likened the Brexit negotiating tactics of the EU to the Soviet Union the comparison provoked criticism from EU ambassadors and politicians, and there were calls for an apology. Right? Mr. Hunt said he wants to negotiate a credible Brexit plan by securing changes to the controversial Irish backstop. However, he does not rule out leaving the EU without a deal if such an outcome becomes the only way to deliver Brexit. But unlike his leadership rival Boris Johnson, he says the current departure date of 31st of October is not a hard deadline so right there by him saying it's not a hard deadline people have picked up on that and say Jeremy I'm sorry mate you, you, you're not really you're not really ready to leave right they're saying he's not ready to leave and he will keep pushing the can down the road it is just like what I said when I was on the uh, I was on the the show with um, of 31st of October. when I was on the show with um, Victoria Derbyshire when I referred to Rory Stewart by saying Rory Stewart can be and is seen to be a person who will not just kick the can down the road but will kick it everywhere. I'd love to hear your views in regards to that, in regards to German. German. What do you see about German? What you're looking at now? The person, the discussions, the different interviews, what he's saying, calling Boris and saying that um, we need the, the they are, they are both want to achieve the same thing but they are different persons and he was pulled up on that by saying you need someone you can trust right and uh, it was alluded to say that you can't trust Boris but when he asked when he was asked a question directly he said I wouldn't call a colleague I wouldn't say that about a colleague that you cannot trust a colleague I'm happy this is what he said I'm happy to serve in a Boris Johnson administration I'm happy to serve the country and I'm happy to serve the party. That is unlike Rory Stewart. Rory Stewart who said, I'll never ever serve under a Boris Johnson administration. And even a couple of the MPs who are on the side of Jeremy Hunt are saying they doubt that they would actually serve under a Boris Johnson administration. Okay? So that is the bit there regarding Jeremy Hunt. Boris Johnson now. Many people call him the bumbling one. Many people call him many different names. Um, I, I can't say some of the names that people call him. But right through the years, Boris Johnson has somewhat been seen as the darling of the Conservative Party 
seem to be the person with that magic or that stardust factor. Everybody wants to see this stardust. He's got charisma. Some people are saying he had the mojo, but has he lost the mojo in a sense? Right? Who is Boris Johnson? Where is he from? What is that issue in regards to him actually uh, having this squabble with his partner? Is it relevant? Is that relevant? Is it correct that the media is all upon him? Or is it that what they are trying to say is... And what I saw is this. Many people compare Boris Johnson a bit to Donald Trump. Um, and one of the things that I saw today, which is a similarity, is that Boris Johnson now, if he was actually campaigning and he wanted to get headlines and wanted to pay the media house, he don't have to do that. Because all the media is actually doing their honest case. That picture which was taken, when was that picture taken? Hang on a second. That picture didn't take recently because he got a different hairstyle questioning him about his private life. Who is, what happened in the house that night? You know, and from that day, no answers because he's very firm and he said it all the while. I do not bring my family and my personal life into politics. So therefore, you're going to wait till thy kingdom come forever. I will not question that many people need to answer as well is that would you be happy that you are having a squabble and someone call the police but not just calling the police but actually taped it all right it's the whole aspect of the voyeurism state within the uk many of these reality is like a reality thing again this has become a reality program some may deem or some may say no it is important it is practical and it is correct very correct for persons to understand who is this person who is going to be in number 10. He's going to be the Prime Minister. Is he going in with a wife? Is he going with a girlfriend? If he breaks up with that girlfriend, will he be carrying different girls in there as well? Is making it a bit authentic, you know? Some people are saying he's one of the first homeless Prime Minister because this house of present, it's it's in under the whole divorce thing and with his girlfriend, which was saying, get out. Can you imagine? The man vying for the leadership of the country, leadership of the Conservative Party and, and Prime Minister, it was kicked out, <laughs> was kicked out of his house by his girlfriend and is sitting on the street. I remember years ago, I was living on Barry Street, Barry Road, which is in Dulwich, when I first came to the UK. And I believe one night I, I, I was locked out. And I had to sit, well, it was a shared door and I had to sit on the door on the inside there. And, and, um, and, and, and yeah, it's a bit awkward there. I, I, did I sleep? I don't know if I slept all the night there or so. Like, or maybe I called somebody and went over to somebody's house or whatever. Like, this was, this was, um, in the 1998 or 99 or so in the UK. But anyway, can you imagine Boris Johnson sleeping on the ground? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. I'm, I'm just giving a sort of breakdown as to Boris Johnson and and um, Jeremy Hunt. I, I spoke on Jeremy Hunt a moment ago, what he is and, and a bit of his track record, giving a sort of summary so we can understand a bit of who are these two persons running to be the leader of the Conservative Party and ultimately by default, the Prime Minister. Many questions people are asking as well that don't understand is how comes 160,000 person will choose a prime minister he is an unelected person and i say at the same time these guys talk about brexit and the eu having these unelected bureaucrats bourgeoisies these persons who are there who are actually saying um it's all these different things making all these decisions and the uk saying nigel farage was we want to get away from them and yet at the same time you're having the country having a new prime minister unelected but i want to shoot a hole in that when you have a general election people are not voting for a prime minister people are actually voting for a members of parliament this is not like America, where you've got a presidential system where people can directly vote for the president. Trump, Obama, Clinton, you know, Bernie, or whatever like that. Coming up to an election, 2020, people will be able to vote directly for one of the, the person's name was put up. In the UK, Jamaica likewise, we have a prime minister, people vote for the member of parliament. So therefore, 
I don't live where Boris lives or where his constituency is, so I'm not able to vote for him directly. I can only vote for the, the person in my area in Lewisham East, where I live. Persons who supporting uh, Jeremy Corbyn, not Hunt, Jeremy Corbyn, you cannot vote for Jeremy Corbyn directly unless you live in Islington, in that area where his constituency is. So people do not vote directly for a prime minister. But yet at the same time, they do, in a sense, vote for that person by virtue of being inspired and vote in that member of parliament to ensure that that person becomes the leader or that party becomes um, in government and the person who is the leader of the party ultimately become the prime minister because guess what they are the leaders of the party and by virtue of them being the leader of the party then they command the confidence of the queen if they have the majority of members of parliament what happened with in 2010 with david cameron he did not have everything all the figures that he needed so therefore he went into bed figuratively speaking with the Lib Dem, Nick Clegg. Nick Clegg became Deputy Prime Minister and then by virtue of such, David Cameron became the Prime Minister and Nick Clegg held, was that balancing factor. This is something that could happen as well because there's a talk about a potential deal with Nigel Farage and any new government in order to stop Jeremy Corbyn from becoming Prime Minister. So therefore the Brexit party who is out there, who is fueling and stoking their fire to get things going, there's a possibility if they become um, very effective at that next general election, if the pressure is put on either Jeremy Hunt or Boris Johnson as the new leader, as the new prime minister, and will start getting pressured left, right and centre from Jeremy Corbyn, Nicola Sturgeon, um, Vince Cable, or Ed Davy, who is possibly of the, the new league. Or there's another leadership contest which is going on with the Lib Dem, and I think it's between Joe Swinson and as well Ed Davy, because Vince Cable is stepping down. So I can kid you not, the next time, whenever this new um, leader is in place, July the 23rd, right? Give it, I kid you not, give it seven days or less. No honeymoon period because I've got to get straight at work. There will be the call for a general election. You have no mandate. You have no mandate. You have no mandate. You have no mandate. That's what's going to happen. Because same as how they did it with, with uh, Gordon Brown, that's as how they did it with Theresa May. They didn't have to call election, but they did it because they felt the pressure was getting too much. It happened in Jamaica with Andrew Hollis, the first time he became prime minister, when it was handed to him by Bruce Golin by virtue of changing of the leadership of the JLP. Then he became the prime minister. That was a switch. He lost that next next election where, and, and Portia Simpson became the prime minister in Jamaica. Next election, Andrew Honus won as a result of that. They didn't vote for Andrew Honus, they voted for their members of parliament. Only the persons who have Tivoli Gardens were able to vote for Andrew Honus. But because he's the leader, then he became the prime minister. I'm sure I'm talking to persons who are well learned and everything like that. So don't have to go any further. But I'm going to spend a few minutes now. Um, bear with me now as I speak about Boris Johnson. What is his track records? He is a front runner in the face to be conservative leader and prime minister. Boris Johnson is one of the UK's most recognizable politicians. Right? And I profile built up as an MP, London mayor, foreign secretary as often seen, is achievement accompanied by controversy. Editor of the Spectator magazine, as he's a journalist and a writer, and I've got news for you, contestant, Boris Johnson was already well known for his shambolic persona. I've been to events already where Boris Johnson comes in and his hair is deemed and everything is done, and within two minutes, the hair is all fluffed up, you know? That could never happen to me, definitely. My hair would always have to be in order. Oh. I don't have any hair. <laughs> but anyway, uh, in 20, 2011, 2001, he became an MP, replacing Michael Heseltine. 
in the safe conservative seat of Haley and Tam Thames. Michael is a time who is called Heza, Ta Gaza, not Gaza, Heza, Tarzan, one of those persons who was in the back of Margaret Thatcher, Heza, not, you know, same person. He's a Euro, um, friend of the Europe, and he's very opposed to Brexit. He wants to remain. Many people say it's because of his business interests. Gay rights. He was considered more liberal than many Tories. As a journalist, he had questioned the repeal of laws banning the promotion of homosexuality by local authorities. But as an MP, he changed tack and said he, the state should not interfere in people's lives. He also voted in favor of civil partnership. Mr. Johnson continued to attract controversy. In October 2004, then conservative leader Michael Howard ordered him to visit Liverpool to apologize for a spectator article accusing its residents of walling in disproportionate grief after Ken Bigley, an engineer from the city, was kidnapped and killed in Iraq. And the following month, he was sacked as shadow arts minister and amid claims he had misled Mr. Howard about reports of an affair with spectator columnist Petronella Wyatt. Right? Seven years MP for Henley, eight years Mayor of London, four years Mayor for Oxbridge and South Slip, and two years Foreign Secretary 2016-2018. A year later, he was on the rise again, resigning from his spectator post when the new Tory leader, David Cameron, made him Shadow Higher Education Minister. He continued to write for the Telegraph and had to make another apology to World Country after he linked Papua New Guinea to cannibalism and chief killing in a column. By 2007, Boris Johnson MP Henley had his sights set on one of the biggest jobs in UK politics, the Mayor of London. Taking over from Labour's Ken Livingstone in 2008, Boris Johnson remained London Mayor until 2016. It is the longest continuous period of public office that he had held. He has often spoke of what considered to be his biggest achievements during that period on crime, housing and transport. One of the things about Boris as well um, in regards to politics in the UK, um, London is deemed to be a Labour zone or tend to be voting more for Labour. That's what's been happening. But it was very interesting that Boris Johnson was able to deliver um, a Conservative mayor for London. While at the same time, the majority of voters, the majority of seats are, what should I say, concert Labour. And, 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 um, and he was able to do that. So Boris delivered for London. That's how you know he will deliver for Britain. That is one of the sayings. 500,000 new jobs, improved air quality, 235,000 new apprenticeship, 20,000 new trees, knife crime down 17%. 100,000 affordable homes, expanded London living rate, murder rate down 50%, council tax down 10%. But Boris, that's what they're saying. As mayor of London, we keep our promises delivered for everyone. No, I want to do the same for our country. So he's, he's, he's championing and charging on the, the success of his stewardship of London uh, mayorship. The homicide rate in London, which includes murder and manslaughter, fell from 22 per million to 12 per million people during this time as mayor. Or if it was also falling during his predecessor's second term. So therefore, on a Ken Livingston, it was already falling. It's just like in America, where the, uh, Donald Trump is saying he takes credit for the, the jobs which is out there and for more um, black people getting more jobs. But um, statistics are showing that that started to happen during the, the reign of um, Obama. Well, London homicide rate falls, they said. Knife offenses after George Johnson, after Boris Johnson became London mayor, yeah, that fell. London homicide rate fell. Housing, there was an increase in the number of affordable home built, 101,525 by the end of March 2016, of which the Greater London Authority contributed to 94,000. This was a rise. He scrapped the so-called bendy buses, which he said were too big for narrow street. Those bendy buses were something else, crazy. You know, it was really bendy, you know, and um, there was some downfall at the same time, you know, regarding this garden bridge costs and all those sort of things. Olympics, he, he, um, 
he was part of that team because he was a mayor. I remember people remember when he when he had the flag and the flag was wrapping around him. He always say he's um he's somewhat uh bumbling, bumbling. But nevertheless, um that's Boris Johnson. Foreign Secretary, he wanted to return to Parliament before he returned as mayor. In twenty sixteen he won the seat of Oxbridge and Salt Rice Lab in twenty fifteen, resuming his life as an MP again. Because remember he had stepped down. He declared his opposition to expanding nearby Heathrow Airport, saying he would be in front of the bulldozers. As London Mayor, he promoted an alternative scheme for an island airport. Yeah, Mr. Johnson has been appointed first by the new Prime Minister Theresa May in 2016. Served that term for two years, but walked away when the, the Chequers deal was something which was um, not something which he was familiar with. Boris Johnson as well is one which has got many criticism because of he talked about... Um, the, the watermelons, well, the pickings, you know, um, the, those sort of racial sort of overtone, and as well the the bit about uh, the the phone box or something like that with burqa for for Muslim ladies. There are many controversy about. It. I won't get into that, but just dealing with some of the things which are on the front line um, with um, Nezani Ratcliffe, that was the lady who was who was detained in Iran. Um, he support he actually tongue in cheek or whatever like that foot in mouth, whatever, he actually spoke of the case whereby, in the case of British Iranian national Miss Radcliffe, jailing Iran, Mr. Johnson had to apologize in Parliament. He said she had been teaching journalists in Iran when she had been detained, contradicting her statement that she had been in holiday at the time. So what happened is that she was arrested by the Iranians because they said she was actually doing some spy stuff. Um, she told them she was on holidays and Boris Johnson said she was teaching journalism. Right? And by saying that, it sort of fuel the thinking of the Iranian. Maybe that she was teaching some spy stuff. Right? So, so there's a, a lot of things there, but I, I, I don't want to go much, much, much longer with Boris except the fact that Boris Johnson is deemed to be the, the front runner. Boris Johnson is a, a Remainer, right? That's his position on Brexit. Let me see if I can find a bit about his position on Brexit. Um, Boris Johnson was a leading figure in the Vote Leave campaign during the 2016 EU referendum. He became well known for his attacks on the EU and for advocating the benefits of Brexit. He declared that he was pro having cake and pro eating it. But it's always been clear which side he would support. While Mayor of London, he spoke of the benefits of being in the single market. And in the article on Daily Telegraph in 2013, weighing up the pros and cons of being in the EU, he said that leaving would not solve the EU problem. He made clear he supported a plan to ask the British people to decide about EU membership. And during the Brexit campaign, he, became under, he came under sustained criticism from those in the favour of Remain for his claim about the benefits of leaving and what he called taking back control. Right. So therefore, of the two, Boris is the remainder. Of the two, Boris is the favourite. And of the two, it is more than likely that he will be Prime Minister. But one can always remember David Davis and David Cameron. David Davis was a frontrunner. David Davis was going all the way. And then Cameron made a speech and it all turned. And the members voted in Mr. Cameron as a Prime Minister, as a leader of the Conservative Party at that time. And David Davis has been in the wilderness ever since. So therefore, it is not a done deal on it till it is over. Because even though the uh, parliamentary um, membership has, has appointed him, has, um, has voted for him to be the, the, uh, as the last two with Jeremy Hunt, it still has to go past the members, ladies and gentlemen. has to go past the members. And... Um, and as a member myself, we will get the ballot, the papers coming out soon. And as a result of that, we'll be able to vote in the next leader of the Conservative Party. And ultimately, by default, the next Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. And the next constitutionally date for the next election is 2022. So he doesn't have to do anything, doesn't have to call an election, unless there's a vote of no confidence that kicks in in Parliament. And if you don't deliver Brexit by October the 31st or around that time, it is going to be like what they say in the Green Mile, dead man walking. And that is why there's got to be this result.
got to solve this break. There's much more things that need to happen. There's much more things that need to be addressed. The NHS, crime, housing, finances, a lot of things that need to be addressed. just got to solve this Brexit issue. Whether it if you're gonna stay in, you stay in and shut it down. If you go out, let's go out. But as far as I'm concerned, in order to restore any semblance of respect and integrity in Parliament and in the political system, you have to deliver the Brexit, right? And get a good deal and leave. But if the EU is being very difficult and won't deliver a good deal, then what's going to happen? Simple. Well, you just have to walk away. And, and, and I always say to Craig David, that song which he did, I'm walking away from trouble in my life, Maybe that's a song which, <laughs> maybe that's maybe 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 that maybe that's a song that was actually created for for Brexit, for the whole purpose of that, you know, because it is deemed that Europe may be a trouble in one life. So therefore, I'm walking away from troubles in my life. Um, la ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope that this somewhat um, um, for those, you know, for those somewhat coming back later. And listening and watching, maybe it can actually shed some light as to as what I've, I've not come across, and try my best not to um, be very vocal with my views, but just to set the tone and set the stage because it is very important that we are aware of what is happening. Now, let me see. Uh, any, just you know, any any questions or anything like that, please. You can always put it in and I'll respond so I thank you guys who have, who have come on tonight Stephen, Angela Mark, Norder, Clive and other persons those on Instagram land as well thank you so much for coming on as well I keep the the, the pressure or the spotlight on this whole issue but I will not get into too much of the personal life and all those um, tabloid um, quasi tit for tat you know journalism because there's so much bigger issues to to discuss so many bigger fishes to fry so many key things to be addressed as well and um, the Prime Minister when he gets in must get in and no holidays but just get down I know one person who's having a holiday and having a ball and who is looking so relaxed and so refreshed and enjoying herself it is Theresa May the Prime Minister she's having a whale of a time and she's enjoying it why not she went through the fire she's been grilled and now she can go and enjoy her life enjoy her retirement ret ret um, her, her retirement with her husband philip and um she served well the best that she can do ladies and gentlemen i'm silburn sidil remember to like and subscribe to the show um Remember to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is Silver and TV. Remember to follow me on Instagram, follow me on um, uh, Twitter as well, Silver and TV or Silver. Any Silver and Sidil out there, it is I'm the only one as well. And um, yeah, that's it. Peace out and have a good day. Have a good night. And for those in Jamaica, enjoy the sunshine because I heard that there's some great sunshine out there. But before I go, I saw something the other day. I saw uh, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry did a speech at the BAT and he talked about helping someone to cross. Yeah. And it's a very powerful speech. You need to check it out. You know, it talks about helping persons along the way, helping someone across the road. But he said something that is there are people out there whose destiny is tied up into you helping them to cross, right? People will be coming into your life, my life, who will benefit as a result of your stewardship and as a result of your time. You know, I have a business card here and I shared it with someone the other day share with two persons actually and someone called me and said by me putting that business card on your table inspired them because they saw something which they wanted to do and they said they called and they said they want to support what I do because somewhat they believe that what they want to do is tied into 
what I am doing, right? And I always say to a person like that, whenever that happens, that's dangerous grounds because I'm going to grab onto that opportunity. Because when that life journey, as one takes that journey and move on in life and charge your dream, charge your visions and on that road to success, you're going to find the right persons that come alongside. Take it from me. I know what I'm saying. 2015, I started the show. And all the persons that came along were all defined, de destined, and played that key part in the process of that time. Simple as that. No burden, no stress. Of course, you got to go through the motion, you know. But living within your means, but living beyond your dreams. That makes sense? Living within your means, but living beyond your dreams. Because you cannot keep within your dreams. You've got to expand beyond it. Because the initi initiator is that dream. But it pushes you and it motivates you to go beyond into the next level. But you still can live within your means. And as you live within your means and go beyond your dreams, then you find things that come your way. Opportunities that come your way. Finances that come your way that enable you and listen to this write this down enable you to now live within your means beyond your dreams i've got to listen to this back oh, this is powerful living within your means beyond your dreams right and it is possible the right persons will come along persons who are divine and divine too propel you to the next level and their dreams and their vision is tied into you for that moment for that season and for that time all right ladies and gentlemen i'm silver and Sidil, and i approve this message and i approve this video have a wonderful evening and god bless you peace out